Where you're watching us from, please know that we're here for you. We intend having a great conversation. And today, the subject of our discussion is going to be on the latest Afrobarometer report. You also know that Fitch, they released their latest report looking at um, what their own projections are for the December elections. The report by Afrobarometer is already indicating um, that Africans, they trust the democracy being practiced on the continent, but don't trust the institutions, so the presidency and then the various institutions of states well fingered across wide range of surveys that were undertaken across the African continent. We should be worried, all right? And so let me just say good morning to Kwekweron joining us. Please share the stream. Kelvin Yashon, good morning. Newton uh, King, Sherry Giovanni, regular uh, with us right here. Now let me just introduce our guest uh, and uh, legal practitioner, Lawyer Apia Dankwa is joining us. Good morning to you, Lawyer Apia Dankwa. Good. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm doing good yourself. Great. Oh, I'm well. And then, Dr. Samia, good morning to you. Uh, good morning to um, uh, our viewers. Uh, good morning to yourself and my co-panelists. Um, uh, I'm good uh, by God's grace. Let me also say a very good morning to uh, your viewers and your fans mm. uh, at uh, Ashaiman. They are scrapped here. Uh, we have you have nice you friends there. You you deal in scrap now? No, no. They they are they are your cherished viewers. Okay. They have sent me a message that they are they are watching you. There's in, a friend of mine called Mutala. Mutala who, in a shaman scrap yard. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, who, right. who, who, who who tells me that they have mounted a giant screen this to morning to be watching us. watching your program? I want to say a very good morning to them. Doctor Samuel, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lawyer Jantua is a regular. Every Friday we make sure that we bring him here. Hook or crook? How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm well. It's just that um, I don't know what you be thinking. I think the second part I'll be asking you what you benchmark your uh, indicators on. What your benchmarks will be to vote for either your president or your parliamentary candidate. We'll do that. Uh, Prince Ahmed, let's also now let's go through what the survey report is indicating, and um, well, very worrying uh, among the reports is that Ghana's much heralded reputation for being a haven for clean elections apparently has been tarnished by increased violence and this report is spanning from 2013 to 2023 so we should be worried increased violence in elections eight fatalities during the 2020 presidential elections and the president has been fingered as increasingly becoming heavy-handed stifling media and eroding the accountability of institutions. Now, this is where the crux is. According to this, there's been a decline in terms of the numbers that were in support of our democracy, because at the time they were doing this, 2012, 2013, 82% said they supported the type of democracy we're practicing. By 2022, 2023, the number reduced to 76. Nonetheless, that's a majority number in terms of the percentage. And overwhelmingly, Ghanaians overwhelmingly reject any form of uh, military style of leadership. We don't want that. Those who are satisfied with this type of democracy being practiced currently, um, at 2012, 2013, 74% of Ghanaians were satisfied. Now, we only have uh, just half of the population, 51%, saying they are satisfied. Now, on, on whether there's corruption in Ghana, 77% of the population believe there's corruption in Ghana. Among that 77%, 75% believe corruption exists more at the seat of government. Now, the 55% out of the number, the 77, they all believe that Persons at the presidency are corrupt. 40% believe not all persons are corrupt. All right. I don't know what you make of this. Let's take a gist of this in the story that's put together. I think like, this is reflecting in the, the data that we have, that they, largely because some of the declines that have been recorded is a reflection of people's experiences and their views about what is happening in the country. And we say this because all the indicators are just like I've mentioned, whether the country is going the wrong direction, perceptions about corruption, 
even just general confidence in the public sector, if you look at all the indicators, there is none that has not dropped by double digits. And that is almost historic. Like we don't record, we haven't recorded in a such instance in the Ghanaian case in the past, um, since Afrobarometer has been conducting surveys in the country. And so we think that some of it is directly linked to the views that people have about the government's performance. And of course, when it comes to issues about um, corruption or anti-corruption efforts, it's about human rights issues, especially um, the rights of the media to be free and to publish as they wish. This is what Ghanaians want. Demand for media freedom is very high. But when they see instances of the media being restrained in any way, then this is an indication of a, an approach that many Ghanaians feel is, is wrong. And this is reflected in their you know, perceptions or their views about the country. What do you make of this? I mean, comprehensively, you look at the totality or the numbers that were surveyed representing the generality of the Ghanaian population, and this is it. Their concerns, their belief in democracy, yes. Their satisfaction, no. Believing that there's corruption, 77% are the seats of the presidency, for example. Should we be worried or not? Yeah, so let me, let, me, let, me, let me take this opportunity to wish your viewers a good morning, uh, my co-panelists. Good morning. Uh, lovely morning, in fact, I, I'm really pleased to be to have met my own big brother, uh, 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 lawyer Jantua. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we can have a very good relationship. We have history with, between us. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm honest, you guys are age mates, so. Oh no, certainly. Ah. He's my. Yeah. He could. He could be my uncle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> his, but but his but, father but was. A colleague of my father's in the Nkrumah government. Oh, okay. and his father used to come when I was young. He used to come home a lot. Oh, so CPP. Then CPP. he went to MPP. Well, I say, no, my but now, but now movement for change. Please go ahead. <laughs> so I, I'm very worried uh, about what the, uh, the, uh, the research shows. Clearly, uh, the research uh, uh, pretends. Uh, for uh, for uh, for our democracy. Mm. Not that um, I, I am I am surprised. And uh, you are not surprised. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because of the political culture that we seem to be forging in this country. Uh, if there is one thing that we want to understand, in so far as dem democracy is concerned, or in our desire to uh, use uh, constitutional democracy uh, to better protect. All of our individual rights, our freedoms, our, 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 our liberties to create a society where we are all capable of pursuing our, our, our individual ambition, then it is critical that deliberately as a people we forge the right political culture that will sustain democracy. Because if there's something history has taught us, that that over the course of history, man seems to fight against democracy. As in, uh, the fact is, democracy as a system of government uh, has only had a, a, a sustained a prevalence since after the Second World War. Uh, so now, if we in terms of its consistency, yeah, because uh, some, sometimes we, we will speak as if. Uh, Western Europe, and then uh, as it has practiced democracy for a very long time. But if there's something history has taught us, then it is the fact that democracy in Western Europe as it became prevalent just after the Second World War, just after 1945. So then for me, uh, what we all need to consider is for a continent that for a very long time was real under a system of governance that seemed to promote totalitarianism and uh, 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 absolutism, then what have they done to sustain dem democracy as against those of us in Africa? And what lessons can we learn from it? And my view is that to sustain democracy, then you need to carve the right political culture, the right political culture that will tolerate diverse views, that would uh, 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 hold leaders accountable. Because mm. that's the only way you, 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 you can sustain uh, the concept of the rule of law, which we all agree is the only way in which our liberties, our rights, 
can't be, be, uh, be protected. What do you think, since we promulgated the 1992 constitution, were yes. the intent just transitioning from a military rule and looking over the last 31 years, we haven't done right for us to now reach this point? So, in my, in my view, I see these are, these are four attempts at constitutional democracy. And, and so we have, we, have, we have the benefit of some history in how we, uh, as a people, have handled this. Now, I think when you read the Constitution in, intently, you could see that uh, the framers of the Constitution, having benefit to how we've, we've handled democracy, felt that to sustain it, then we needed to create or carve the right political culture. And, and, and that's why in our, in our Constitution, we created the, the, the uh, NCC, uh, Commission of Civic Education. Because, once again, as in having ben benefit of history, we all know that for your democracy to be sustained, then you need a citizenry that participates, or a culture that participates in the democracy. Yeah, yeah, you understand? And to, and to have a political culture that is participatory as against to parochial, then it is important that you have a citizenry that are well informed. Citizenry that are well informed. Or, or and also, you have proper democracy. Because you see, when you read, I think, Article 36 of our Constitution, 35 of our Constitution, where we speak about uh, the political uh, uh, agenda of the Constitution under, under the under the directive principle principles of state, state policy. policy. Mm. You, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you state that one of the binding principles that ought to guide our political consideration when we are supposed to make decisions is a consideration to create proper democracy. Now, what is proper democracy? Proper democracy isn't just about going to vote every four years. Because the definition of democracy, or, the, or largely the most accepted def, a def, a definition of democracy, being the definition that Abraham Lincoln gave in his famous Gettysburg speech, being power of the people, power by the people, and power for the people. You understand? It dictates that democracy shouldn't be just an act of, of voting, but it also should include finding a way of, inclu of, 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 of including the people in how decisions, decisions are made at every single level of, of, of society. And that's why some of us feel that to do that, then you need a proper decentralization. As in, power must come from the bottom up. Mm. Decision making must, uh, must come from the bottom up. But we have, we have, unfortunately, we've created a system where power is more or less centralized up, especially so in this uh, uh, administration, and also a fundamental failure of political institutions to create the right political culture. And when I say political institution, beyond the government, also our political parties. Because the political culture that has been created in this country is one that is very parochial. And, 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 and you can see in how we've handled issues in this country. Mm. As in, if we had the right political culture, there was no way Brian Champon would be confident in attempting to purchase uh, what's called the, uh, the, uh, the hotels. If we had the right po po political culture, then Anado will see everything wrong in standing or telling the people of a conflict that because they didn't vote for him, that's why he's refusing to bring development there. If we had the right political culture, then the Minister for Roads, you understand, mm. will cringe at the thought of even telling the people of Edreso that nobody, no MP that does not belong to his party, can lobby him to fulfill his obligation towards the people of Ghana. You think that's an insult to the people who vote? Yes, but that is, a re but, but you see, that, uh, uh, those kind of statements is having enabled because of the kind of political culture we have. So for me, to, for us to reverse the trend being shown to us as in the very scary trend, a trend that says that f just 51% of Ghanaians are satisfied with democracy. A trend that's saying that increasingly we are having a, a, a populace of, a, who would accept military takeover. To reverse that, then we need to deliberately create that right political culture that can deliver on the promises of, of, of democracy. Yeah. That would breed leaders who's, who, who are fooled, not by their own parochial interest, but who are fooled by a deep-seated desire to create an environment where we can all make of ourselves mm. what we can and will. Mm. That is the end of democracy. And we can only achieve that if we deliberately, we deliberately create the right political culture. And, and Sami, a key consideration for many of these voters based on 
the level of or the quality of the questions that were posed to them was how they their economic livelihoods also influence what they perceive to be a, a, a good democratic system. And um, what would you say has accounted for them to be thinking that the metrics of the basic standard of living that is measured on how well the economy is managed will have a certain reflection on how they think the democratic dispensation is a quality one or not? Oh, yes, of course. Um, they say that a hungry man is an angry man. Mm. Um, people of Ghana have seen through it all under various leaderships uh, how their standard of living has been owing to the fact that they know that under every regime certain amount of monies were allocated certain privileges were had by those regimes and so if they compare and contrast and they see that under this regime for the past eight years has re received over six or seven times of what other regimes have had. But at the end of the day, their standard of living, their purchasing power, continue to decline. They have every right to express disquiet or, dis or dissatisfaction in democracy. Because at the end of the day, we told them that they have the right to vote. They have the right of, you know, association. But if they associate with a certain particular regime, mm under the guise of democracy and they see that on a daily basis their purchasing power reduces they will not be happy about democracy they will wish that we go under military regime which for me is not an option you understand the just point like I'm majority making? of them exactly so i am not surprised about this i'm not surprised that at the end of the day people believe that president Kufuado and dr baumia under their regime have been the most high-handed they have been the most intimidating and they have been the most reckless and the most corrupt regime that the people of Ghana have ever experienced. And for me, as a young person, I am beginning to believe that under this regime, our democracy looks like a joke. Why so? Look, this regime has waged a war of attrition on every sensitive state institution that has been a bulwark of our democracy. Which of them? Look at the media. Your own friend, Johnny Hughes, when he started Johnny's Bite, he only did a critical, constructive, patriotic criticism of the regime. What happened to him? He was booted from TV3 to 3FM. Today, today, the MPP has boycotted media general. Because Media General is not behaving like other media platforms. Media General is asking the relevant questions. Media General is making sure that accountability is brought. Media General is making sure that they hold the feet of government appointees to the fire of accountability. But they certainly do not want that. And so they have boycotted Media General. Our own friend Manasseh Azure, who is a media personnel, who has been under, I mean, undertaking investigations to bring to book errant political figures in this country. At a point in time, he ran away from this country with his tails in between his legs for his life. You ran away with yes. his? Yes, you with still... in between his legs. He bolted from this country because he was being attacked after several investigative analysis he did, exposing some corrupt officials. Why is Anas Aremeyao Anas? When President Kufadu was in opposition, he told us that he will use the Anas principle to fight corruption. Today, not only have the Anas principle, okay, been taken away, not only has he been, been denied of his principle, his cameras and mic has been taken away from him. His partner has been murdered because an errant politician exposed him. Look at the judiciary, President Tekufuado. Because of his activities in the judiciary, public opinion has expressed disquiet. They have expressed dissatisfaction. Many people do not believe that the judiciary is now independent. He has appointed 96 judges. Only a few weeks ago, he wanted to add five, two 
the chief justice. He has appointed known personalities who are MPP into the courts, into our superior courts in Ghana. There's a, a, a there was a lawyer called lawyer Solomon Chumesi who was MPP domain is chairman. He has a, he has been appointed to the high court. In fact, he's a known MPP serial caller and propagandist. There is one called Justice Eric Ansa Ankuma. He has Facebook, Facebook posts who he declares to support for President Kufuado. In fact, during his vetting, he publicly told us that he has MPP sympathies. There is one judge called Justice Yaogau who is currently in the Supreme Court. He publicly admitted his MPP membership during his vetting. In fact, he was the MPP's PC, parliamentary candidate, in Ho in 2016. Our current Chief Justice, in flagrant disregard of Article 1442, secretly went and wrote letters for judges to be appointed onto the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, over the years, that has not been the situation. Go to the Electoral Commission. For the first time, an Electoral Commissioner was removed on whimsical, capricious basis. Remove what? Was removed. Charlotte say? Oh, told you because of procurement oh, massa. breaches. Oh, massa, massa. Who were the people who petitioned? Do you know them? Faceless individuals. We disagree with that claim. Today, the Electoral Commission has been populated with MPP serial callers and foot soldiers. Dr. Apia Hene, a known MPP propagandist who hops from one radio station to another, campaigning and doing propaganda for President Kufuado. He has been appointed as deputy EC. Bosman Asari, a former MPP test one patron of the University of Ghana, is now deputy director for Electoral Commission. So today, Dr. Baumia is roaming about in up north, engaging in obvious ethnocentric tribal regional politics. What do you mean? The only institution. What did you hear that? that? Oh, have you not seen him on video telling the whole country that they should vote for him because he's a Muslim? Have you not seen that video? Have you not seen it? The only institution that is mandated to rein in such errant politicians is the Electoral Commission. Why are they? They are quiet. Because they have been populated with MPP food soldiers. President Kufuado, has he not appointed, at a point in time, finance minister, family member, roads and highways minister, family member, works and housing, family uh, member, uh, uh, secretary to the president, family member, and over 65 family members have been appointed to the Flagstaff House. All breeding corruption and high handedness. And so when I say that Ghana's democracy is now looking like a joke, it is because of this. Look, democratic regimes can be as dictatorial as military regimes. They only do so with a stroke of a pen. They don't use a gun. Nobody could have prevented from Kufuado. Democratic regimes can be as dictatorial as military regimes. They only do so with a stroke of a pen. By writing. They can do what military regimes can do. Which institution in Ghana is currently independent. Judiciary, they are not independent. Electoral Commission, they are not independent. Ghana Police Service, they are not independent. Military, they are not independent. Because somebody has decided to attack the independence, to attack the democracy of, of this country. Look, for the first time in this country, we saw party hoodlums being incorporated into Ghana's elite national security. They were only given training for two weeks. And they were giving guns, M16, AK-47, to visit mayhem on innocent Ghanaians during an electoral process. A committee was set up to investigate it and give recommendations. None of the recommendations given by the committee was implemented. President Kufuado put that report, tore it into pieces, and told the country that we, he doesn't care who, we should go to hell. Those who were beaten in the Ayah also was worked by election. They have been beaten for free. For the first time in Ghana, 2020 election, eight people were killed. President Kufuado has not even given a statement to sympathize and empathize and commiserate with the families of those people. And so I'm not surprised about this report. Under President Kufuado, our democracy is a huge So for you, it confirms, of course, based on these indicators. Of course, of course. There's no doubt about why, it. Why, even though they believe in the democracy, they still say that they are... Because they satisfied. have seen, they have seen, they, have, they can read through the lines. Okay. That under President Kufuado, 
our democracy is a sham. That is why on a daily basis, like the purchasing one. power of the people of Ghana have been reducing. So the only solution to this is to boot out this regime for a new regime the, to come. It's as simple as that. The, the, the way you gave out the breath means that it's almost like a refrain or a rhetoric. We keep saying the same thing. Is that it? Or what can we do then to better improve the situation? We sh good morning. Good morning. Morning, 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 morning. We morning. shouldn't be looking at only <clears throat> the party in power. We should look at political parties across board. across board and what political parties have done for us going forward. Mm. What manifestos have done for us going forward. When you have a president who says, I don't believe in national development plans, they are socialist and they are Marxist, how can that be? Mm. How is Not that? Just a squeak, right? Yes, how is that possible? Because a president, when you are voted in, you are voted in to serve and you are voted in to do what the people like, even if you do not agree with it. Even if you do not agree with it. You come in to serve. You don't come in to impose mm. two different things. Unfortunately, we've had a president who hasn't been in this game only two or three days ago. He is the one man who straddles my father's generation and today's generation. You, you mean the president? Yes. Who has transitioned yes. the old and the, the new? Yes. Yeah, he, he, trans, he, he transcends my father's time right up till now. My father died at 102 in 2020. So you can see the number of years of experience he has. He used to come and sit with my father and my father would talk to him with regards to politics. So he knows it all. So for me, he's one gentleman who could have united this country very easily. What very has he done easily. then that disappoints you? Let me go to the, the, report. the report. And let me read a little bit. In our, 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 Where are you reading from so that I can follow you? Page four. One, two, three, four. The fourth paragraph. It says, and I quote, as detailed in this report, most Africans prefer democracy to any other system of government and reject non-democratic alternatives, including military rule. They also strongly endorse norms, institutions, and practices associated with democratic governing, such as choosing political leaders through the ballot box, constitutional limits on presidential tenure, presidential compliance with court rulings, parliamentary oversight of the executive, media freedom, and, and multi-party competition. Remarkably, for a continent with huge gaps in governance services, a clear and growing majority say mm. it is more important for a government to be accountable mm. to the people than to get things done. Mm. And this is where Ronald Reagan's quote fits in. Let me give you that quote. Ronald Reagan quoted, The greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. He's the one. Michael who gets help us with free SHS, <laughs> one district, one factory. Has it been overboard? Look at one district brown factory. Look at the processes that went through. If you are not in that party, you will not get. You will not get. I expected President Kufuado to be that leader from what he was saying before he came into power, from the, some of the, 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 the policies he was touting, the kind of demonstrations he went on before he came into power. I was expecting him to rule overboard, to be different from all the others in this fourth republic. Has he been able to do it? Family and friends. A lot of the things he says is more on a party basis than on a country basis. You can never bring a party before country. It's not so. And the moment you step into that office as president, you are not president for your party, you are president for the country. So you listen to what the people say. How many times didn't we say, Ufurata must go? 
How many times when we realized where we were heading for, didn't we say we need to go to IMF quickly? What were we told? We are proud people. We are this, we are that. Look at where we are. You mean Joshua and Caleb and those ones? Those were supposed to inspire us. What was supposed to inspire us? That we were what? When the, the country was going down, what was supposed to inspire us? Well, the fact that I said we are proud people. You are proud people, Suniska. You are proud people. You don't have the money to handle your economy. One district, one factory. Good policy. Good policy. Implementation was bad. Because really, really, this government should have looked at the capital flight issues first. Ayakao. What's the capital flight? Huh? Explain that one. Money is going out. You mean in investments? In investments, of, imports, imports, mm, imports. Okay. The commander has it with the economy. You should have pushed it more to locals. Within a certain duration of time, locals would have control. But what did we do? We decided eh, to close local banks. How? How do you do that? How many local companies go to Barclays and the like to get loans? How many? Don't they go to local banks? And even if local banks are seen to be doing things ultra virus, don't you put good management in place and handle those who haven't handled it, it properly? What does the uh, Afro -bar -bar barometer say? It indicates that the trend has been attributable to the current economic crisis corruption, and mismanagement. Our, our, our leaders of today do not agree when mismanagement, the mismanagement card is brought up. No, it can't be mismanagement, but you see it written everywhere. I would have thought eh, our leaders will have a certain attitude where when things seem to be going wrong, they will Pull the reins back and say, hey, 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 let's hold it. So, for instance, expenditure. We had voted certain amounts of money for the economy. Yeah. We got to a point where we didn't have the money. We were boring as if our eyes were closed. We should have said, mm, 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 hold back and told Ghanaians, look, we promised to do A, B, C, D, E. Because of our financial situation, we cannot do it. Have that discussion with the people. And when you look at this uh, uh, report, it goes to show a, dis a, a, a detachment between government and the people. By that's way of the, the link between yes, the that, poor economic conditions. Exactly. That is the challenge. Okay. You've got to be able to talk to the people and say to them, like President Kufour did. And President Kufour came. Mm -hmm. And he took... X number of ministers. He came back to us and said to us, my people, I'm very sorry, but I didn't realize that I would need more ministers. Mm -hmm. So forgive me. When has this president asked for forgiveness from the Ghanaian people? When? How? What do you mean? What type of forgiveness were you, were you expecting? When? Isn't this the first time pensioners have had to have a haircut in this country? Has anybody apologized to them? Has the so president to apologized to them? Has he said, my people, we are sorry for this particular situation. That blame comes from us. We didn't handle the economy well. The fact that, you see, and one thing we should learn, Ghanaians are very forgiving. Oh. If you show Ghanaians that you've done wrong mm. and you accept what you've done, mm. they'll be able to forgive you. But in this country, today, it's not important. Abia a lawyer. Um, you, you, you have practiced law for 16 years, so very experienced, I'll say, averagely. So, so that means that once you pass 10 years, Charlie, who did? At the end of the day, you, you, you benchmark, for example, you go to 24 of this very report, and you look at the drop in negative terms. In term, yes, in terms of the points. We have countries like um, the poor economic conditions and the good economic conditions correlating with what they think about their democracy. And we seem to have gone back across the, 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 point, the point zero or the 1.0 mark. So we, we, we are going the negative. So it's negative. 
So 24. You take a look at it that so way. Those countries on top are the ones who seem yeah. to have done, done well. well. And, so we that those, is, and we those below. That is Togo, yeah. Morocco, yeah. Mozambique. Okay. Tanzania, so, so, Cote d'Ivoire, so, and, 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 Zimbabwe, and, and Togo Zambia. is our neighbor. Yes. You know, and, and Cote d'Ivoire is our neighbor. Now, when you take a look at that, and you look at how it looks like citizens in Africa, citizens in Ghana, are relating their present satisfaction with the democratic dispensation, with how well-meaning and better their livelihoods are in relation to the economy, what do you think we have done wrong? Yeah, so, in my earlier uh, submission, and I feel all my colleagues here, uh, their submission reflected that view. That democracy comes with a promise. There's a reason why we took upon ourselves a constitutional democracy, whose focus is to limit government. Limit government so that at least we create an environment where our liberties are protected. To what end? Yeah, you understand? Now, the end is that so that like I said, I can, I can make of myself what I will or I can. Now, let me refer you once again to the directive principles of state. Mm. Article 34, 35, yeah, So, so you know the, the 35 has to do with the political, mm. the 36 mm. is, the with the, yeah. is with the economy. Now, what, uh, when, when you read article uh, 36, one of the abiding principles espoused there is that is the one that the focus of uh, government, the direction that government ought to go in terms of the kind of economy is it will create is an economy where private sector will thrive. Yeah, 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 yeah. You understand? Now, if it's a duty of government beyond everything else, also to uh, to create that. Then the question is, this government and all governments, what have they done? What systems have they created to create an an environment where private enterprise will thrive? And clearly. Like and my big brother here, Riley said, they have not done that. And then when we've complained, because especially under Nanado's regime, because his focus is not to serve us, understand? Because his agenda is adverse to the agenda of the entire country, he simply doesn't listen. Nanado's agenda is certainly adverse from the agenda of the entire country. I'm I'm I'm, I'm fortified in that belief. Like everything he's done tells me that this is a president who has an agenda which is different from the agenda of the country because he knows the agenda of the country. He knows what the people of Ghana want and he's delivering a government or he's delivering a leadership which is adverse to a collective uh, 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 what's interest. Now, let me give you an example. You know, when you take the economic history of this country, I think sometime in 82, we came to a conclusion that, listen, we need to create a free market economy. economy. Yeah, I understand. And one of the one of the uh, 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 fundamental no-nos in that kind of system is price control. Because we know what price control can do for us. Now, if you are a president... Uh, ...the president... Presents a solution which says that let's control the pricing instead of first of all looking at the fundamentals of the economy or taking the opportunity to then fortify our antitrust laws because antitrust laws are laws that essentially deals with monopoly and enables competition within the market. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Instead of the minister taking that route, takes a route that will tank the economy further, that will kill enterprise, will kill innovation, decides to take a route that would destroy businesses and then cause a fundamental loss of jobs. Because that's what uh, what's called price control does to the economy. Now, what would what what we would have expected from the president has been the vanguard of the will and ideals of the people is to ask that minister to resign. Ideally. Ideally, he, he should have sacked him. Asked. He should have sacked him immediately. Yeah, immediately, as in when your minister, because the minister is using your powers, powers that the people of Ghana have given you for a particular purpose. So when your minister is using those powers in a manner which is adverse to the collective will, eh, which flows against the fundamental principles espoused in the constitution, which is to create an environment, an enabling environment where our economies can, uh, can thrive. Mm -hmm. And you, the president, you do not see the, the, the need to sack him then clearly i'm convinced that you are uh, you are using the powers we have we have we have, we have given you adverse to 
the, our collective agenda. You understand? And it's because of all these reasons. If you take the gold for oil, and, and clearly, uh, the, the, the whole idea behind it does not make sense. You take how, because you see, the role government plays in every economy is in its fiscal policy and in its monetary policy. policy. Yeah. Now, what is the sense? Because my brother Riley said, one day one, a fantastic idea. And one of the fundamental problems one day one has had is a fundamental lack of investment by government into the one, one day one F and the parochial nature in which the president and his people have handled the one day one F agenda. Now, the, uh, the point is, how can you justify why you spent just 400 million Ghana cities on one day one F and 2.1 billion on NAPCO? Now, you are telling us that NAPCO created 100,000 jobs, 100,000 temporary jobs. Yes, and, and you tell us that with just about 400 million, one day one F has created over 200,000 permanent jobs. So now what wisdom, if you are using the powers we have given you, the fiscal powers we give you, mm, in a manner which is adverse to our collective agenda, you understand? Then the people of Ghana will start questioning, as in, so this democracy we, are, we have taken upon ourselves, as in, what's the point? You understand? It dilutes the fidelity of the people towards our democratic credentials and principles. And, and, and that's what this president has done. So that when you are, when you are analyzing the legacy of Danado as, as a leader, as a president, then his legacy will not necessarily be the, the free speeches, but his legacy will be the radical impact he's had in democracy as the system of choice but, or, or the people of Ghana. So yes, uh, for me... I think that Ghanaians need to take a cue from the kind of leadership that Nanado has given us and its impact on our faithfulness to democracy. Now, on 7th December, when we are going to vote, let us choose a leader who has put together a program that will bring Ghana together, that has, who has shown over the years that he has a level of commitment towards the desire to cause Ghana to rise again. And for me, the leader that has demonstrated over the course of his life and in the program that he's delivering, he's promising to deliver to the people of Ghana is Honorable Alan John Kujo-Chaman. Let us throw away behind him and let's all together build the right political culture that will sustain our democracy and that will cause Ghana to rise again. Thank Looking you. at this, then what then will be the benchmarks for which the ordinary Ghanaian will look over and say that this will be the benchmark that I should be indicating before making a choice in December? Oh, of course. Um, people look at uh, their purchasing power. People look at their freedoms. People look at the way a manner corruption is tackled. Those will be the major benchmarks. People will look at the credibility of the candidates. People will look at the track record, their experience. And people will look at the policies that they intend to implement when they are going to vote. This will be the benchmark. But before I even get there, look, I agree with lawyer Pierre Dankwa that President Kufuado's agenda mm, is different from the agenda of the people of Ghana. Look at Bank of Ghana, a revered state institution that over the years had been making profit, suddenly takes a nosedive. Their fortunes suddenly tumbles. For the first time, in this regard, of the Public Financial Management Act in this regard of the Bank of Ghana Act. The governor of the Bank of Ghana was happy to print 70 billion Ghana cities to the government of Ghana. That was the first time it was happening in our country. The governor didn't care a hoot. In fact, thousands of people threw themselves onto the streets of Accra to demonstrate. He told them that he doesn't, he doesn't care about what they did and that they are jokers. That was what Governor Addison told us. You know why he did that? Because he had the express backing from the president and the vice president, who are the leaders of this country. Look, today, today, the MD for NIB mm, is a parliamentary candidate, okay, in a constituency in the Ashanti region, okay? The National Investment Yes. Bank. Yes. Okay, Mansung Kwanta, PC in the Ashanti region. How do you allow MD for a state asset like that to be a parliamentary candidate?
purely on political basis. Meanwhile, an auditor in the same NRB, Mr. Thomas Hild Emisa, who was contesting as parliamentary candidate in Cape Coast South, was told to step down. And so it's really about the leadership, the one on the seat, his utterances, his demeanor, his respect to the people of Ghana, his respect to the democracy that we are seeing. He doesn't care. His agenda is different from the agenda of the people of Ghana. So the only way to solve this issue, the only way to bring confidence in our system is to boot out this regime. And I listened to my, my, my boss, um, Lai Jantua, when he spoke about free SHS and one is one factory. Look, right from opposition, President Kufuado was never serious about free SHS. It was a political promise. In fact, there was an interview with Steve Sako of BBC. They say the name of the program was Hard Talk. When President Kufuado was asked about the amount of monies he will invest in free SHS, he was bundling about figures. He hadn't even studied the program and what amount of monies will be invested to make sure the program is fully implemented. Up to now, they have invested just about 10 billion. Meanwhile, they have had over 1.3 trillion Ghana cities. If you do the computation, it's about 0.8%. It pales into insignificance. You cannot tell the whole country that because of 0.8% investment in a program, students will not have facilities to sleep. Students will not have washrooms. Students will not have classroom blocks. And that you, you, you have much get the program, okay, and you are exploiting the whole country, getting excuses that the reason why you cannot make free SHS better is because you have invested a huge amount of money. 0.8% cannot be huge. If you have an intentional, if you have a deliberate intent to make sure that the program is done better, you will not complain. So the reason why the MPP is making noise about free SHS is that they are afraid that when your mama comes, he will make it better. Because if this is how they told the people of Ghana they will implement free SHS in opposition, Ghanaians will not have voted for them. They will not have voted. This shambolic free SHS will be made better by your mama. The reason why they are afraid is because they know that when your mama comes, he will make it better and he will claim all the glory. And people will know that the MPP has been empty in terms of the implementation of free SHS. All the people, look, University of Ghana students, they will have declining trust in democracy because they will not understand why a president whom they have killed under the scorching sun to vote for will invest $110 million to construct a national cathedral, ending up in a hole, whilst they are on campus paying 11,000 Ghana cities for hostels, two in a room, 11,000 Ghana cities hostel. Meanwhile, the $110 million could have built several hostels to ameliorate the suffering of students. So today when they watch you this morning, they will not be happy. They will not understand it because it does not make any sense for a president to invest $110 million to construct a national cathedral, which will end up in a hole, whilst that money could have been invested okay. in building hostels that to accommodate now, students. Well, what will be the key so benchmark this is the that situation. we should be looking at? Benchmarking the leaders by Alan Chermantin, John Mahama, uh, for the average voter, Dr. Mahmoud Obaumia, Cheda, that's Nana Bidiakum among others. Is that the criteria? Is that the criteria? What should be the criteria? The fundamental platform with which our governance runs on is weak. Is weak. So we need and a change in mindset. And we've got to be able to identify some of these things that are weakening that fundamental foundation, which is one of them. Winner takes all concept. Is it helping us? Has it helped us in this fourth republic? Two, local government. Is it not centralized now in the upper echelons? So local government is not working. They are looking to what? The executive to direct them. If local government was working, sanitation in our regions and districts would have been able to handle it. Three, constitution. This constitution has ruled us for nearly 31 years. Are we saying things that happened in 1992, eh? 
still pertain today? Yes, there, may be, there could be huge chunks of the Constitution that are right. But there are certain parts of the Constitution that is hurting us today. One of it being executive power. Are we ready to look at executive power? Are we ready to look at parts of the Constitution that don't bode well for us? Are we ready to do that? Look, I feel, strongly feel, mm. that the next president who is going to come in, be it Baumia, be it Jomahama, be it Cheddar, Jomahama. be it Jomahama, I said Jomahama, yes, okay. yes. be it Cheddar, be it anybody, Alan Chematin, Alan Chematin, all of them, like that the president who comes in, the first mindset should be, how do we have a government of national unity? How? Like what? Having the, everybody on there board. are brains who are sitting on the fence who can come in and help. It is not just a question of my party is in power, so all my party members are the ones who are going to enjoy the power. But anyway, my brother doctor talks about them, if you do something and you get all the praise for it. So we did this. So they are getting all the praise for it. We did it. We got, that thing should stop. Because in the Constitution, there's perpetual secession. Two, they expect, the Constitution expects you that when you come into power, a different party comes into power, you have to finish the projects of the previous government. And that is a huge challenge. Look, Fourth Republic heads of states have caused massive financial loss to the state. Massive. Because a lot of the projects that some, a, a, part, a party came in to take over from another party have been left awry. President Kufu, he built quite a lot of medical facilities. They're in the bush today. Today. Nothing has been done about it. Mm. We want a situation where Eh? And the president doesn't believe. He did a number in, of things also for presidential special initiatives that was headed by. He Alan, doesn't Alan believe Alan. in a national development plan. How don't you believe in something like that, where everybody brings their minds together and say this is the direction we are going, and you take a party manifesto of your ideas, and come and give it to the people, and if you can't finish it, what happens? You are there for four years. You are surprised then. How can you say that? I, I, it, it boggles my imagination that you, in your own private life, you don't have plan. 2025 is coming. You will not have plan. You will not plan your life for the year. And you, you're trying to tell me that party manifesto should be the plan. No. There should be a plan where all of us say, this is the direction we want to go. Education, this is what we're going to do. Health, this is what we're going to do. Agriculture, this is what you're going to do. And we should remember, some of these things we do not play party politics with. Some of these things we do not play party politics with because they go to the... They go to the... the, 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 the Mr. Jantua, you the, seem to have a certain gloomy view about the election. Be positive, somebody will say. I don't have a gloomy view, but, you know, you tend to see that we are repeating the same things over and over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, well, let's 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 think outside the box. Let's think outside the box. Look, the ceremonial route, hmm? thirty-seven, all the way to National Theatre. Can we expand that road? Can we expand that road? Are we not still bringing vehicles into the country? Is it not clogging up? A time will come where there'll be massive gridlock. And so what do you do? You look at public transport. How do we make public transport attractive, sexy, plan ahead. and plan ahead? Don't you think it's effective public transport in this country? People will not park their cars. Eh? Won't right. they park their cars? All right. So, now so it's a plan. Mm. If you don't have a plan mm. to do things, mm. there are so many things that... All right. When we'll I have pass you speech, by, just wrap up on this for me. Yeah, so I mean, <coughs> all this, the things we have to look forward to in December and as we gear into the campaign seriously. So, so come some December, we would need to make a, a decision once again as the people. Now, for me, I keep on selling Alan John Kujicha Mountain because beyond what he's done in his private life, which represents a chunk of what the kind of thing we need to change things in this country. 
but also in his GTP or in the movement for change. One of the fundamental principles that uncaused this movement is a belief in the creation of a government of national unity, where it does not matter the party you are from, where it does not matter your tribe, it does not matter your religion. All what we need is your unalloyed commitment to the to your being part of the system that will cause Ghana to rise again. Yeah, 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 yeah I understand. And also, a movement which believes in leadership, in real leadership, leadership that we believe that Honorable Anna Junkoji Chemantin has proven over the course of his career. So I call on all Ghanaians that come 7 December, let's vote for change. And that change will begin when we vote for Honorable Anna Junkoji Chemantin with his government of national unity. Thank you. Dr. Ayer, one yeah, and a half minutes. Yes, um, I think that the people of Ghana should look forward for His Excellency John Ramani Mahama, who is on course to reset this country, who is on course to revive this country, mm. who is on course to build the Ghana that we want. Look, before the MPP came, Roland, Ghana was able to pay our debt. In fact, we were able to pay our debt such that we had extra 44% of our money to do whatever we needed in this country. At a point in time under this regime, Ghana was not even able to use the money that we got to pay all our debt. We had to go and borrow more additional 4% to do that. This is not sustainable. You need a president, a president that is compassionate. You need a president that thinks about the people of Ghana. You need a president who won't lie, who won't peddle outrageous falsehoods. We need a president who believes in investing hugely in social capital, investing hugely in capital projects that thrive or brings more employment and development in this country. And that president is Excellency John Ramani Mahama. You have heard that he has made mention of bringing a Women Development Bank when he wins in 2025. He has made mention of the 24-hour economic policy where the TUC, AGI, seasoned professionals and economists have said that this policy is a game changer. He is the president that we should look out for. Rajan, to one and a half minutes. Hmm. Look, I believe that one of the major challenges we have with our governance system mm -hmm. is personal interest. Parochial uh, interest personal over, interest yeah. is, over the national. is a challenge for us. Greed is a challenge for us. Selfishness is a challenge for us. And fortunately or unfortunately, politicians are moving Ghanaians away from the core support and bringing them to the middle. For Ghanaians to say, eh, so this one said this, this one said that. They will compare. We are moving down that line, which is a good thing. Whether we understand what it takes is another thing. Yeah. Is another thing. So for me, the transparency of the leaders is heavily, heavily weighted. Can we trust this? Can we trust that? Can we trust this? Can we trust that? But you see, out of three of them, eh, the three of them, they all have political experience. One less than the other. Dr. Baumia has eight years. No, be so. Or 16 years. Really? Yeah, 16 years. 16 years. When he came, he came when? 2008. Flandre, Flandre. Real, what do you call it? I'll say it's eight years. Alan Chamatin has been there since the first time. President Mahama has been vice president, has been president, he's been everything. They all understand what it takes to rule this country. We need to be able to identify, and this is the, the, the challenge for the Ghanaian, that out of these, who can we really trust? Who has done it before? Who can we say has the Ghanaian at heart? That decision would have to be taken by Ghanaians. All right, so let me read a couple of your messages. Uh, Kiss Kingston Bisna Basimega says, Good morning, I'm watching live from New York, Glass and Kwan System, 24-7. And then also uh, Kevin Yashong, um, haven't joined us. 
Lydia Kam says, Alan was part of this mess we're facing now. We had a Kufu, uh, if a Kufu had not shown him Pepe by bringing him, would he have backed off? But I like how they are speaking now. We all need to love our country. Cherry Giovanni also sent a message. Um, Kennedy, Adam Kennedy said, it's time, it's the kind of, of um, what, the kind of leadership and talk that we need right here. For all the things that we're saying this morning, it is important that we raise issues about our democracy and try to ensure that we're able to do what is right by us. Now, Kando, Opoku Prempe Abwaji, we have to be truthful. Things are difficult for the ordinary Ghanaian. That is why the trust in this democratic dispensation is being questioned. We all love democracy, but we need good leaders. The Ghanaian should be the one who is the victor, no one else. Now, um, we have more messages, and this one from, um, okay. Uh, this one from Spikey, or Spike, who, who, who says, the Japadi agenda has created this abysmal economy and bad governance. Let's say it, and then we'll be free. The reported risk, the reported risk to Ghana's democracy by the Afrobarometer survey underscores the importance of ongoing vigilance towards upholding democratic values. And this one is coming from IAB Aista, Abutia, Tetifalto region. Uh, Ijam Frama in Bokrum Kumasi says, we have to always stick to our guns and demand what is rational from our leaders. We are having a population that is young, yet there's no hope for them. Let's think for them. Now, how can you borrow to pay your debts? That's Prince Henry, Kofodia. Master Planner Junior, Master Planner Junior Kintampo. President Kufa's agenda is not the agenda of Ghanaians, really. Dankwa and his butterfly family are rather having the agenda to tarnish the image of the Nanado government, a government that provided ambulances to each constituency, created over two million jobs, provided free education to its citizens. All these are not the agenda of Ghanaians. Mr. Dankwa, this one, big job, big job, big job, they say. And then we have a couple more. Well, um, all right. Do you remember these metaphors used on us by President Kufuado, Ken Oferiata, and Apo? One, Sambalat and Tobias. Two, Naysayers. Three, Caleb and Joshua. Four, Nation Wreckers. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. La, la Dankwa. Yeah, Apia Dankwa, sorry. It's, it's hyphenated? Yeah, it's hyphenated. Dankwa, thank you. Lawyer Kwame Jantua, is he also hyphenated? No. Okay. Lawyer <laughs> Jantua, thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. A, thank you. All right, so let's do this by you. We have cash out. It goes with a short code, star 439 hash. With cash out, you have to choose option two. That is by choosing TV3. And then you have to increase your stakes. Then you are in a better position to always win. Very important as well. So cash out goes to the short code, star 439 hash. Let's have some great time this morning. And all of us um, will have... Uh, sometimes smiling uh, through a mobile money account to the bank. Also, make sure you step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, you dial star 446 hash, pick 1 to 13 being the range of numbers. You get to win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake, and then you win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. However, early bets love day watch up on is also available and that is at 10 a.m. All you need to do is to make sure again, you dial star 446 hash, you choose between the range of the numbers one to 39, you get to win big 20 times, 40 times or 400 times your stick. You want to get interactive as well, very easy. You can play also online at dewa-nle.com or again, you use the alternative. The hashtag uh, or the short code star four four is hash. You can also call the number zero five five six two five nine two four nine for inquiries, or the number zero five three two four seven nine eight nine seven. Now let's cash out before we take a break. So uh, we'll quickly do 
the countdown, 3, 2, 1. Early bird winner, the first draw. The winner is the number 0244, 904. Is that your number? Not your number. <laughs> Lawyer, is that your number? <laughs> I, I wish. You wish, huh? <laughs> All right, so we'll take a break. When we come, we'll try and call the number. But gentlemen, enjoy your weekend. Great people. And stay with us throughout the rest of the day. And tomorrow we have key point as well, okay? We're taking a break. We're right back. Again, remember, we're live in the Crowa constituency. So, uh, Na Ashoko, we've been bringing to you that interaction.